everybody, I'm Miss Jan. Thank you for joining me for Family Storytime on the Swickley Public Library YouTube channel. Tune in all week for more story times. And I'd like to thank Scholastic, Viking, and Tilbury House for their permission to read the books to you today. So here we go, let's start out with a quiet hello. Hello everybody and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello everybody and how are you? How are you today? Okay, now put on your loud voice, let's hear it. Hello everybody and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello everybody and how are you? How are you today? Good job. Okay, let's make sure we have all of our body parts. Ready? Start at the top. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Okay, now we're gonna speed it up. Let's go fast. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Good job, good job. Give yourselves a hand. Okay, let's check and make sure all of our finger friends are here. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hello, fingers. Let's give them a little finger wave. Now we're going to sing them a song. One little, two little, three little fingers, four little, five little, six little fingers, seven little, eight little, nine little fingers, ten fingers on our hands, yay. Okay, as you can see, I have some books for us today. Let's uh, sing the alphabet to make sure all of our alphabet friends are here. Let's go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I never will forget how to say my alphabet. Good job, awesome. Okay, so I want you to pop in those good looking eyes, screw on those good listening ears. Now, many of you might have seen a praying mantis. It's a very interesting bug. In fact, sorry about that. I have a picture of one right here for you to see. And I've seen a few in my yard this summer. So uh, put on those good looking eyes and go out and look in nature and see if you can find one. Manuelo the Playing Mantis by Don Freeman. One warm summer evening in Cloverdale Meadow, a lonely praying mantis named Manuelo stood still as a stick and listened to beautiful music coming over the hill. Manuelo had attended these outdoor concerts many times before, and he knew the shapes and sounds of all the different instruments. His favorite sounds were those of the flute, the trumpet, the harp, and the cello. Manuela wished that he too could be a musician. So here's the concert, all the people sitting, listening to the music in the park, and there's Manuela way up on the hillside. When the concert was over, he climbed down from his perch in the thicket and went home to the pond. Hopefully, Manuelo started rubbing his legs and his wings the way crickets and grasshoppers and katydids do whenever they sing. But hard as he rubbed, he heard only silence and the clicking of a cricket coming nearer and nearer. Clickety-click, it chirped. A mantis can't make music the way I can. And then just as quickly as it had appeared, it disappeared behind the tall grass. There must be something I can do, Manuelo sighed to himself. Then all at once he thought of an idea. I know, he said, I'll make a flute. At the water's edge, Manuelo found exactly what he needed, a hollow cattail. In the middle of the pond sat a frog, practicing his singing. He stopped his croaking 
and watched as Manuelo clipped off one of the tall reeds and knit several tiny holes along its stem. But when Manuelo held up his flute and began to blow, not a single sound came through, not even a toot. Grumph, grumph, croaked the frog. We frogs know how to croak. Now that is music. A mantis can't make music the way frogs can. And with that, he jumped into the water. However, Manuelo hadn't even noticed the frog. His mind was on more important matters and he set out to find another kind of instrument to play. Close by, he spied a trumpet vine. Just the thing, he said, I'll play a horn. After snipping off a trumpet flower, he held it up the way any fine trumpet player does and began to blow. He blew and he blew and he blew until he grew blue in the face. Once again, not a single sound could he make. But Manuela was not going to give up easily, oh no. On he went, undaunted. He scanned the ground for something out of which he could fashion a harp. Ah, at last, just what I want, he said, picking up a twisty twig that had fallen off a fig tree. Soon he had bent and fastened the twig into a perfect harp shape. For strings, he found some strands of an old cobweb that had stretched across the lowest branches of the big tree. Now he was ready to sit down and play his harp. But when he began to stroke the delicate strands, they broke off one by one, all because of his snippy claws. No, indeed, the harp was not meant to be his instrument. Poor Manuelo sat there feeling very sad he loved music so much, and yet he could not make any. At that very moment, three katydids came into the clearing, one, two, three, and began to chant, Katie did, Katie, don't you know? A mantis can't make music the way we can. Manuela was discouraged and almost ready to give up trying when he heard something whirring high above his head. Take heart, my good fellow, said a thin, wispy voice. I know how you feel. I can't make music either. That's who was talking to him. Turning his head completely around, Manuelo looked up and saw a spindly spider suspended by a thread from a branch above. My name is Debbie Webster, and I've been watching you all evening, she said, as she slid down lower and lower until she hung directly in front of Manuelo's face. If you will do as I tell you, maybe together we can make a cello. But first of all, you must promise not to eat me. Manuelo's eyes widened. He had forgotten about the cello. Why, of course I promise not to eat you. And he meant it. This could be worth a thousand meals. All right then, advised the spider. First, you must fetch me an empty walnut shell and a stick with a curly cue on the end. Without asking any questions, Manuelo went about searching everywhere. In hardly any time at all, he had found half a walnut and a stick with a curly cue on the end. Tucking them both under his arms, he rushed back to his spindly spider friend. Now, my good mantis, said Debbie, if you will fix the stick tightly to the shell, I will spin strings for you. No sooner had Debbie whispered this than Manuelo attached the stick to the walnut shell. He watched as the nimble spider spun four strong silken threads from one end of the stick to the other. All I need now is a bow, said Debbie. Can you think of something that will do the trick? Yes, yes, I know, exclaimed Manuelo. I saw a bluebird's feather. That should make a splendid bow. And indeed, it did. At last, Manuelo was ready to play his cello. Taking the bow in his right hand, he began moving it softly across the silken strings. And as he bowed back and forth, the most beautiful melody filled the night air. Debbie swayed to and fro, keeping perfect time to the music, like a pendulum. Gradually, from the grassy glade, from behind the fig tree, and out of the pond, crickets 
grasshoppers, katydids, and frogs came creeping forward, making a wide circle around Manuela. As they listened, each creature could not resist joining in with the cello's mellow music. Soon, everyone was taking part in the concert with clicking, fiddling, wing singing, and deep-throated croaking. Never was there a more glorious insect symphony. On and on, far into the night, Manuelo played to everyone's delight. As the first glow of dawn lighted the morning sky, Manuelo rose slowly to his full height and stretched his arms out wide, a sight which served as a warning to the rest of the orchestra to take leave. Manuelo waited for Debbie Webster to slide down inside the hollow nutshell. Then he slung the cello over his shoulder, strode across the meadow to his home in the thicket. And every summer night thereafter, Manuelo played his cello while Debbie swayed back and forth, back and forth by his side. Good listening, you guys. Give yourselves a hand. Okay, you were such awesome listeners, and that was such a long story that I think it's time to get a little exercise, okay? So let's do very tall, very small. I'm a little ball, it goes like this. I'm very, very tall. I'm very, very small. Tall, small. Now I'm a little ball. I'm very, very tall, stretch. I'm very, very small, tall, small. Now I'm a little ball. Last one, really stretch up. I'm very, very tall. I'm very, very small, tall, small. Now I'm a little ball. Miss Spider's Tea Party by David Kirk. Oh, look at all those lovely scrumptious bugs. One lonely spider sipped her tea while gazing at the sky. She watched the insects on the leaves and many flying by. If I had friends like these, she sighed, who'd stay a while with me, I'd sit them down on silken chairs and serve them cakes and tea. Two timid but beetle bugs, Ike and May, crept from the woodwork that same day. But when Miss Spider begged, please stay, they shrieked, oh no, and dashed away. Right. Three little fireflies flew inside that night, their spirits high, their tails alight. They spied the web and squeaked in fear. We'd better get away from here. The little trio did not feel they'd care to be a spider's meal. Four bumblebees buzzed outside. Please come to tea, Miss Spider cried. The four ignored her swaying there. She waved a tea towel in the air. She took a cup and tapped the glass. Then one bee spoke to her at last. We would be fools to take our tea with anyone so spidery. Within the shadows of the room, just peeking from behind a broom, Five grinning faces bobbed and peered. Miss Spider smiled, her heart was cheered. Descending for a closer look, she danced into the gloomy nook, but sadly found those jolly mugs belonged, alas, to rubber bugs. They weren't real bugs, they were toys. Some ants strode in, they numbered six, but ants with spiders will not mix. She brewed them tea from hips of roses, the proud platoon turned up their noses. A fine bouquet concealed its prize of seven dainty butterflies. Miss Spider, watching from the wall, was not aware of them at all. The tea table was set for eight, with saucers, cups, and silver plate. The cakes were fresh, the service gleamed, yet no one would arrive, it seemed. Her company in no demand left her a cup for every hand. Nine spotted moss kept safe and warm in a shelter from a thunderstorm. 
They stood beneath an open sash and watched the jagged lightning flash. Miss Spider dropped down on a thread. Look, here she is coming down. A silver tray above her head. She'd hoped to please them, but instead they flew away in mortal dread. They've left me all alone, she cried. She dabbed her eyes and sadly sighed. It's plain no bug will ever stay. Her tears splashed down upon the tray. Ten tiny steaming cups of tea were perched atop her trembling knee. She sipped and sobbed, then heard a cough, and turned to see a small wet moth. A fragile thing, so soaked by rain, his wings were too damp to fly again. She smiled and took a checkered cloth to cloak the frail and thankful moth. They talked and snacked on tea and pie until his tiny wings were dry. Then lifting him with tender care, she tossed him gently in the air. Look, she's taking a piece of pie home. The moth told Ike, then Ike told May, who went from bug to bug to say, there's no reason for alarm. She's never meant us any harm. So later on that afternoon, assembled in the dining room, 11 insects came to tea to share Miss Spider's courtesy. 12 tender violets in a vase presented at Miss Spider's place Set by her chair, so neatly spun, she munched the blossoms one by one. Her friends were glad to watch her feast upon the floral centerpiece. It was a great relief to see. She ate just flowers and drank just tea. Miss Spider's reputation grew. Before too long, our hostess knew each bug who crawled or hopped or flew, and all their lovely children, too. And there she is with all the bugs and all their children, happily ever after. So thank you again for listening. <clears throat> so thank you for listening today. And I want to share with you a little craft that you could do. It just involves a couple pipe cleaners. I took two long ones, cut them in half to make four, and another pipe cleaner for the middle. And if you open them up a little and bend their tips so that they look like little feet, and then wind this around to be the body of the spider. So you will have your own little Miss Spider if you so like. There you go. Well, thanks for being here and take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>